Hello and welcome to our stats note. We're on section 10.2, regression. So we're going to still be working with these two sets of values um, that we're graphing a lot of times on scatter plots. Um, but we're going to be looking at um, how to get the equation for the line of best fit, and then um, when we use that to make kind of predictions for values along that line. So first off, let's just review some stuff about equations of lines. Um, Note from algebra class, this is something you've seen before. When we do straight lines, we usually use the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. However, in statistics, we rewrite it a little bit. We swap it around. We actually do the, the b, the intercept, first, and then the mx, the slope, and the x, second. So it's more of a b plus mx. So you'll see it written like this, uh, y equals b sub 0 plus b1x where b sub 0 would be your y-intercept, where you cross the y-axis would be b sub 0, and then b sub 1 would be your slope. So b sub 1 is your slope. So just kind of flip it around a little bit. So if you get an equation like this one, the negative 2 is b sub 0 is the y-intercept, and 3 would be your b sub 1 would be your slope. So it's got a, a, a positive 3 slope and a negative 2 intercept. Remember, there are three different types of slope. We have positive slope that goes up to the right, so that's your positive. We have negative slope that goes down to the right. And then we have the constant, that was the zero slope. Um, so you could have any one of these with a nice correlation. You might have a positive correlation, negative correlation, or correlation where um, the one just stays the same. We probably won't see that because usually you'll see positive or negative. So. So when you're dealing with equations, again, the equations for these lines for this, we're going to see the intercept first and then the slope. It feels a little bit backwards if you're used to your algebra class where they do it the other way. Okay, now to make this line of best fit, um, when we try and draw a line that fits, we need to have some kind of way of measuring how good the fit is. And one of the things we look at is how the dots on the graph compare to the line you make. So we look at the dots where they are in the graph, and we look and notice that they don't always line up exactly where the line is, right? There's usually some distance between the dots and the line. Some of them will fall on the line, but most of them will be a little bit above or a little bit below. So we'll measure that distance, the distance from the line to those points, and we'll call that your residuals. So residual R is just a way to compare how well the line fits the data, because you're looking at the spacing between your dots, your data, and the line. Um, the measure is the sine, so it is sine, so if it's above, they're positive, they're below, they're negative. Vertical distance from the line to the data point. That's your residual. Now, to compare the lines, it's nice to add up all those residuals, but if you add up those residuals, you always get zero because they're signed, right? So you have some that are above, some below. You add them all up, you end up with zero every single time. So that doesn't really work very well. So instead, we actually square the residuals first because that makes them all positive, and then we sum all those squares. So the way we compare different lines that might fit the data is we'll measure all the residuals, square them all to make them positive, and then add them up. So we'll actually compare these numbers down here. And the line with the smallest number is going to best fit the data because it has the least difference between the line and the data points. So we call this the least squares criterion. So it just basically says, if I want to make the best possible line that fits the data, I'm going to look for one that has the less or the least sum of squares. Because if that's less, then it's a better fit. The line that best fits the data is the one with the smallest possible sum of squared residuals. That's the one that we want. So that's what we're trying to look for. When we look for a line that best fits, the line that best fits the data, we're looking for the one that's going to have the least of these residuals after you square them, make them all positive, and you add them all up, which one has the smallest. Okay, that line is going to be called the regression line, and we'll use the regression equation to write the regression line. So we developed a method for finding this line that best fits the data. Um, it satisfies the least squares criterion. Call the line best fit the regression line. So that's the line that best fits the set of data according to the least squares criterion. Its equation looks like this. We use y hat for the line of best fit. And b sub 0 is going to be your 
intercept. V sub 1 is going to be your slope. Um, these are the equations, how you get V sub 0 and V sub 1. So V sub 1, you take um, R, which is the linear correlation coefficient, times SY over SX, which are the standard deviations of the X and Y variables. That's how you get V sub 1. And then V sub 0, you actually take you get by just plugging in um, the average of the x's and average of the y's into here with b sub 1 and calculate b sub 0. There is a manual calculation formula. So for manual calculations, if you're going to do this by hand, you use this formula. But we're never going to use this. We'll use technology instead because this is just really tedious. You can see there's a lot of different rows and columns and stuff you have to add up. So to, to save ourselves lots of time and heartache, you know, we're not going to do this by hand because um, you literally have to fill out like this whole chart and all that. So instead, instead we'll just use the um, lin reg a plus bx because it actually gives you um, the b1 and b sub 0. It gives you those so you don't have to do all this by hand. So I'm going to skip it. We're not going to do it by hand. We'll use technology. So instead of doing it by hand, we'll use the calculator. So what we're going to do, first off, we're going to put our x's in list 1, and we're going to put our y's in list 2. So I'm going to pull out my calculator and do that first. So let's get it out there. So OK, go to stat, hit enter on the edit option. I'm going to clear off the last list I have in here, because that's from last class. So I'm going to type in my x's. I'm going to do the 1, the 2. So I'm just doing the x's, right? 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8. So it's my x's, and I do my y's. So I got 3, 1, 5, 7, 6, 9, 9. All right. So my x's and my y's. Now once I have those in there, then I can go to my stats and calculate and do the lin reg. I want a plus bx, right? Because I want it to be in that same order where you have the um, the intercept first and then the b, the slope. So I want a plus bx. So I do lin reg, a plus bx, and our x list should be list 1, like always, our y list should be list 2, like always. It leaves the frequency link, list blank, and then you can calculate. So that's what we're looking for. All right, and so this actually gives us a, which is your intercept, and B, which is your slope, as well as that information we used last time, which was the line of correlation, all that stuff. So, so we actually were already doing this last time, but we just weren't finding out what the equation was because we were, we were more worried about the um, linear correlation coefficient, R. So A for this one is 1.1957. Um, you know, you probably don't have to go that many decimal places, but you want to just go a few so you can kind of get a good accurate amount. 1.0543, that would be our B. So the equation, so the regression equation for this one is going to be y hat, we use y hat for the regression equation, equals the intercept, which is your A, that's your intercept, so 1.1957, plus the slope, 1.0543 is your B, is your slope, 0.543 times x. And that's the regression equation. So if I want to, I can actually graph this equation. So this would be kind of a fun way to show how this line works. So let's go ahead and graph this. I'm going to go to my y equals, because this is where I can graph it. Just y equals and graph my algebra equations like this. So it'll be 1.1957 plus 1.0543x. Now, when I go to graph this, if I just hit graph right now, um, I guess I actually fit most points, but um, I'm probably missing some points because this is still zoomed from my last class. I'm going to hit zoom stat, so zoom 9. And then it should show all my points, and you can see how that line does kind of fit there nice in the middle, right? So you can have some points below, some points above. It's kind of nicely centered. That's what we're looking for, this line that just follows the trend the best. So again, the distance between these points and this line, those are the residuals. So each one of those has a residual. When we did that lin rest reg a plus bx and we got the r remember that was the measure of how good the line fits again the closer that is to zero the worse it fits the closer it is to one or negative one the better it fits so like if we did ours again just to see lin reg a plus bx in this case we got an r value of 0 
0.91 to round it. That's pretty good, right? So there's a 90% correlation. So we can see see that that actually the graph it fits it pretty well. These points are kind of all along that line. Look nice. So this equation is very useful in this case. And we'll talk more about later how sometimes you have to be careful about using the line because sometimes the scatter plot doesn't really match up a nice line like this. But that's the line they're looking for. This is called the regression line, and it's just the straight line that best fits the data. Let's do a couple more of these. Um, same idea. They're going to give us our data. We're going to put it in our list one and list two. And just do that lin reg a plus bx. We're not going to worry about doing this by hand because it's just too time consuming, just not worth the effort. So I'm going to hit stat, edit, clear these out, type in my numbers. So get those in, make sure they're the same length. I'm just going to run that stat, then red j plus bx, and then we can see what it looks like. So calculate, and there's the values. So you can see this one has a regression correlation r of negative 0.6, so it's not nearly as good. If you graphed this, you would see it doesn't fit quite as nicely. Um, but we can get a line for this, so the equation for this one, um, a was 7.6, b was negative 2.2, so our line, y hat would be, remember, a goes first, it's 7.6 plus, this time a negative 2.2 um, x, which if you get a plus and negative like this, a lot of times people just rewrite this as minus. So you probably put this minus 2.2 x. So that'd be the best answer. Let's turn it into subtract. We don't need to add a negative, we can just subtract. And that'd be our line. Again, the first one, A, is always your um, first number. It's the intercept, and B is the slope. That's what it should look like. Okay, let's do one more. Again, we'll just type this in. Again, list one for x's, list two for y's. We'll run that lin reg, A plus BX. We'll figure out what A is and figure out what B is so that we can write our equation. So, we did the last one. so again, the big thing is just to be typing these in. Um, it's always the fun part with stats class. There's always so much stuff to just type in the calculator. Okay, so I'll type this first row in. So I get one six. six. Hopefully, the other list is the same length. Oops. Make sure you type the numbers right too. Seventy two fifty five. Man, I can't type these right to save my life. Okay. Three ten. Okay. Same length, that's good. Just double check always to make sure you got them right. And then we can do our stats and calculate the lin red j plus bx. Make sure it still says list one, list two. Calculate. There we go. So A is four thirteen, B is negative twenty-four. This one is a negative 0.99. So again, negative correlation, just remember that means it just goes down as you go to the right. So this is going to go decrease. So as x increases, um, the y value is going to actually get lower. So you can see the big the big numbers for the bottom are for 1, 2, and 3. And then for like 6s and 5s, actually the, the y value gets lower. Um, and it's a really strong correlation. That's really strong. 0.99, so it's not quite 100%, but it's pretty close. So this one would show really strong correlation. Okay, so A was 413.08, B was negative 24.8, so this would turn into 413.08 minus 24.8x. And that's the line of best fit. So this is the straight line that best represents this data. Um, that's the line we would use. If you're trying to kind of get a line that matches the data, goes through the middle, you know, most closely aligns with that data. Now, why do we make these lines? Well, we make these lines because we want to make predictions. We want to be able to kind of ex um, have expectations about what values we'll get. For data values, we don't necessarily have in our data set. Um, so to do that, we're going to talk about the variables and the language we use here. So if you're doing like algebra equations, we usually call the y the dependent variable and x the independent variable. So x is kind of the one that marches along. And then y usually is based on x a little bit. Um, and Regression analysis and statistics, we're going to call y the response variable, 
because it responds to x, and x is going to be the predictor or explanatory variable. So basically, x will kind of, you know, that doesn't necessarily cause y, but you can kind of look at x and then, you know, what you're going to expect to happen for y a little bit. So response variable, that's going to be your y. It's going to be a variable that you usually measure or observe after, you know, the fact, your experiment, something like that. Predictor variable is kind of the variable that you use to predict or explain what we get for the response variable. Now, if you're going to make predictions, if you're going to try and guess what, you know, figure out what the y variable is, usually using that equation we've been making, um, you need to be careful about a few things. First off, so when you use the regression equation to make responses, you have to be careful about these three things. First off, if the regression equation does not appear to fit the data, don't use it. Instead, use the simple mean of the y values. So, so we can have scatter plots where they are really all over the place and the line doesn't really fit very well. In that case, don't use the line. You know, if the line does not fit the data, don't use it. So if regression equation does not appear to fit, don't use it. Just use the sample mean of the y value. So just use um, instead of the equation, we just use the average of the y's. So if you get a set of data that are not strongly correlated, you know, if they're just all over the place, they don't make a nice straight line, uh, we saw that in the last set of notes sometimes where they don't really follow a trend, then you just use the average of the y's because that's going to be a better measure. You only want to use this y hat if it's good. You can kind of tell that because you can look at the graph, also because you can look at that r that we were talking about, that linear correlation coefficient, and you can see that if r is not close, you know, not, not, not big, closer to 90%, 100%, if it's closer to like 0% or 50%, that's when you might not want to use that instead. Um, so we usually stick with the y hat only if you are is kind of high enough. And actually the graph, the line matches the scatter plot. Um, I guess that's what the second one says. I kind of jumped around a little bit there. The correlation coefficient, if that is small, close to 0, then you don't use the regression equation. Um, use the sample mean instead. So we'll use that sample average of the y's instead of the y hat. So if you draw the graph, it doesn't fit. If you look at r, r is not very big. If it's less, you know, if it's smaller than you'd like, then we don't use the y hat, the equation. We use just the average of the y's. Um, when we use the regression equation, make predictions outside the range of observed values. So if you, if you have your data set and it goes from you know, 10 to 30, and you start making predictions about 40, 50, 60, or about 5, 2, 3, 1, stuff, stuff that's outside that range of 10 to 30, you're doing what's called extrapolation. Extrapolation, make predictions far outside the range of your values, can lead to grossly incorrect predictions. So linear relationships sometimes will hold for part of the data, but then outside the range, they might actually not hold anymore. So linear relationships may not hold. Um, one thing, you know, like last time we did the car data where we had the age of the car and the price, like that, that's what I think I have down here. And what can happen is a lot of times you'll get to this far end and you'll see that as the car gets older, its value doesn't decrease at the same rate anymore. Because once a car gets to a certain age, it's kind of kind of hold its value a bit because cars aren't going to become negative value, right? They're almost always going to have at least some value because there's like the recycle value. And if they still drive, you know, someone wants it just to drive it. So what you'll see is it'll kind of tail off and it'll actually get curved at the end. Um, you might see the same thing up at the top. So before the first sale, you might see that like cars that right off the bat have a lot more value when they're brand new, and then they kind of steeply dropped before they kind of leveled out um, because cars that are brand, brand new um, hold the, a lot, have a lot more value that as soon as they drop up a lot, the value drops so much. So that's why you might see that, you know, that out here, is extrapolation might not follow the same trend as the actual data data in the middle. You really be careful about extrapolation. Um, the example I always think about this is you know a few years ago we had the big pandemic, and one of the things they would do is they try and predict you know how many people would be sick or have the disease or what would be happening with it in a month or two, and you'd notice that every time they do this they'd have to make all these charts and show all the different possibilities because what they were trying to do is extrapolate from the data. They're trying to look at results outside the range of observed results. You know, they're trying to predict what's going to happen in the future. And that's kind of what you're doing if you look at um, values outside the range of collected data, you go further out of there, you're trying to make, you know, guesses about what's going to happen. So you got to be really careful about that, and we're going to avoid doing that. 
Um, there's actually more complex equations, all this more higher advanced mathematics you do in like a further statistics course where you'd actually figure out how to make kind of those type of predictions. That's beyond us, so we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to try and make predictions in the middle. So, you know, when you look at a gap like this, when you say they didn't have the results for two or three, we can kind of use the line and make a guess about what the value would have been at, like two or three. And since this is inside the range here, those wouldn't be extrapolations. Those would be probably valid things to guess as long as the line fits your cluster data and the R value is high enough. Okay, so let's try this. Oh, before I get to that, sorry, one more thing to say about that. I forgot about this page. All okay. right. Another thing to note is that the slope of the regression line um, can be changed if you make small changes to what your data says. So the slope of the regression line gives us a tool for predicting a change in response variable. So you can kind of make a, a guess about what the value would be. For example, if the data set has y equals 2 plus 3x for its regression equation, we expect that if you, the response variable will raise 3 for an increase of 1 in the predictor variable. So basically it's telling you the slope tells you kind of what's going to change. So you can follow that slope. So what I was just talking about here where you follow the slope down and you hit the value. So they say, okay, what's going to happen at 2? And then I can look at the slope line and kind of figure out what the value is going to be. That's what they're saying with that first part. But I think the, the big thing to mention here is the outliers and influential observers. So outliers, remember outliers are outside your data set, are going to be way outside the overall pattern of the data. Um, so we consider a data point an outlier if it lies far from the regression line. So we're doing regression lines. We're going to look for points that would be way off. So if we have like a point way up here, way down here, that are not close to the line, that would be an outlier. Um, as usual, these can really mess up your results and stuff. So if you can, if you can look at that data and say there's no reason for that value, like it, it, it's probably a mistake or something, you would take it out. Um, if you can't take it out, then you're going to be really wary and you might have to do more complex calculations. The other thing you actually have to watch out for, and this is not an outlier, are influential observations. So these are data points where if you just take out this one data point, the regression equation changes a bunch. So that's what the influential observation does. Data point whose removal causes the regression equation to change considerably. Um, these usually can be identified because they'll have a big separation in the x direction. So there's separation in the x direction. So there's going to be a big gap between them and all the other values. You can see right here, there's a big gap horizontally. And so because there's a big gap, this one right here is an influential observ observation. So taking out that one point takes this line that was like this, and it shifts down to look like this. And it's a huge change in line. It goes from like a negative 20 slope to a negative 14 slope. Um, so the decision to remove influential observations can be difficult. Um, usually it results in narrowing the range because you get a lot less values. Um, so it's something you'd have to look at. Like, is there a good reason why we want to take that value and not include it? Because it really changes our graph. So again, if you're using this for making predictions, you know, maybe you're trying to look at your company's profits or something, you can see how you'd be careful with outliers and with influential observations. Because by removing those, you can get a lot different line of fit, which might show a lot different profit trend. Um, and if you're trying to be more accurate, you know, you might want to really worry about those outliers and those influential observations, because they might throw off your accuracy if they're not really valid results or valid numbers. So you really would look into if you can remove those. Okay, so that's just some things to know about. We're not really going to test on those per se. That's something to be careful with when you do regression lines. But what you will have to worry about in the homework and quizzes is um, using these regression equations to make some predictions. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to find the regression equation first. That's our first step. So let's go ahead and just do that first um, before we do much else. So we're going to have our budget in millions. So that'll be our list one. And then the gross in millions. So if you make a movie, of course, your budget is how much you spend. Your gross is how much money you make from that. So we'll put that into our calculator, and then we'll run that WinReg A plus BX, and we get our regression equation, so we can use that to make predictions. There we go, stats, edits, lots of putting stuff in lists today. That's just how it goes. Okay, let's put this in. So we've got lots of numbers, so 40, 21, 12, 68, 76, 52, 116, 
9. Okay, we got all those in. Hopefully, we didn't mess them up. Let's do the next set. Watch, make sure we got all the numbers. Oh, that's supposed to be 111. 62, 17. Oh, no, there's two 117s. So I almost missed one of them. Okay, 6, 3, 99, 2, 5, 8, 2, 9, 7, Now, one thing I always look for is they're the same length. That's a good sign you didn't miss one. And then it's always good to just kind of scroll back through and just make sure that they make sense. Yeah, you know, see that you don't have any numbers that are obviously wrong. I don't see any big mistakes. Okay, looks good. So let me hit calculate. Do that win reg a plus bx option number eight. And again, list one should be the budget, list two is the gross. So I hit calculate. And it gets me the information. So I can see that the a from my equation, the, the intercept is 9.4, b is 1.4. And the R value here is 0.86. And again, that's something we're always going to look for. We're going to look and see, does the R value work? You know, is that good? So, so here we had A is 9.4, B is 1.4. And I'm not really, really worried about R squared. We're gonna, not going to get to that in this class. You might use that if you went to a, like a stats 2 class. So we're just going to look at the R and notice that that is 0.86. Okay, so the regression equation for this, so Y hat, would be 9.4 plus 1.4x. That's our regression equation, so we found that. Um, to make sure that this is a good regression equation to use, we're going to look at R. R is big. It's 8.8. .8, that's 86% about. That's pretty high, right? Way higher than 50%. So this is probably good enough to use. One more thing you could do is you could type in the regression equation, 9.4 plus 1.4x. And then graph them both, but remember that with a graph, you're always going to have to re-zoom it. So I'm going to zoom 9, so it zooms nicely. And look and see if it fits, right? So this is a good thing you should always do. You should look and see if I draw the line and I put my data on there, it doesn't seem like it fits. You know, if the data is curved, you know it doesn't fit. Um, if the line doesn't really line up with the data for some reason, then you know you didn't have the right regression line. So you should always make sure that the regression line fits the data, the R value is high, if all that's true, then you can make predictions. So we're going to do predictions. We're going to predict the amount the movie will gross if its budget is $125 million. Now, they want us to do a significance level of 0.05, which means that this one, they actually want us to not just say that 0.86 looks good. They want us to make sure it really is good. So we're going to use the test. Remember that we have that stats test the Linreg T test. So we're going to use the Linreg T test because this is how we really can make sure that this is good enough. So if I want to show that this works, I'm going to do a Linreg T test. List one is my data, list two, frequency west one. Let's say not equal to to show there actually is correlation. You could do, um, well, I don't know if we want to do, yeah, we we'll just do with, um, not equal to, I guess it would look like a positive line. You could do like positive correlation if you're looking for positive correlation. I'm just going to show correlation. I'm going to calculate this because this should give me a reason to decide whether or not that there's actually correlation. And so from the p-value for this one, the p-value is 0.00002827. Now it doesn't look like it when you look at that, but that's what this e to the negative 5 means. Remember this e to the negative 5 just means take this decimal and move it four, five spots to the left. So move it five spots to the left, you end up with this. That is definitely smaller than 5% which is the significance level. And so, yes, there is correlation. Since we do have correlation, we will use Y hat for this. So that's why they wanted to give us that significance level because they didn't want us to, us to look at 0.86 and that is, say that is big so we can go ahead and do it. They actually want us to even perform a test to make sure it's good enough. And it is good enough. It's, it's very strong correlation. So now what we'll do is we're actually going to just plug in the value they gave us as our x here and then find out what the y hat is. So for this we get, you know, the y hat will be 9.4 plus 1.4 times 125. And that will give us our value. Just put out this, so type 9.4 times 1.4 is 125. 
And that's what we get. Oh, I've had times both times. I want a plus on the first one. A plus. It should be a plus. That's better. So 184.4. And this should be in millions, right? So millions. Now, if we do this and the correlation test does not come out with positive with correlation, you know, if the point if this R value is too small, chart doesn't work, what we would do in that case is we just take the um, gross, the Y values, the second list, and we just average them and say that's what we expect because we can't base it off the first one. If there's not enough correlation, you just have to take the average of the resulting sets. But because there was correlation, then we could use Y hat. Okay, let's try one more. This one, using the same data, find the best predicted amount that a movie will gross if the budget is 450 million. Now, the thing you gotta be careful with here is if you notice, 450 million is way outside our budgets, right? So this one is so much bigger than any of the budgets we had that it doesn't actually work to make any kind of prediction. Just because you spend four times as much money as anybody else has on your movie doesn't mean it's gonna make four times as much money. Once you get to a certain point, you might level off and you might not be able to make any more money on your movie because there's just only so many people on the planet that come watch a movie. So at this point, we'd say, can't extrapolation, I should say, can't use um, um, the aggression equation. This is extrapolation. 450 is outside the range. So instead, use y hat. So we'll just take the average of all the budgets, or the gross, the gross, the how much the movie made, and we'll say that's the best guess we can get. You know, it might make more than average because they spent so much, but it might not. So all we can do is just do that. So we're gonna go to stats, um, do our one var stats. We're gonna do it with list two because that's where the gross is, as in list two. So I'm gonna just type second list two because we put the, the how much money the movie makes there, and so this is the average for y hats. And so the average for these is 98.3. So y hat, oops, sorry, y bar. Y bar is the average. Is 98.3. That's still million. So we just used one bar stat on list two. So again, idea is regression equations only work if you're within the data range. So if you're not extrapolating. And if you have a good enough correlation. If you don't have correlation, you just forget about the, straight, the, the regression equation and instead just look at the average of the values. So what do I guess they might make? Well, they might make about 98 million. Again, that's probably not the most best guess because most times you spend more money, you probably are going to make more. But it's the best guess we can make. The straight line regression equation would probably give us a really bad guess. You know, if we did that and tried to plug in 450 into there, Probably get a number that's way huge and probably be way more than people really should expect. All right, I got one more example, so let's do one more. Oh, this is about residuals. Okay. So we can use the residuals. Remember the residuals are the distance between the line and the um, values to actually determine if the correlation and regression results are useful. So specifically, um, if you want to use them for performing hypothesis tests. So to use the residuals, we're going to create what is called a residual plot. This is something I'm not really going to worry about for the test, so you don't have to really like worry about testing on this, but this is the homework, so I want to make sure we covered it. The previous stuff we did is probably more what you'll see on the test for 10.2. A residual plot is a scatter plot of the x variables and the residuals of the corresponding y variables. So you're going to take the x variables and then you're going to subtract the y's minus what you should get from the regression equation. Those are the residuals, those little vertical distances. Now, once you make a residual plot, we're going to look for these things to make sure it's actually useful to correlate the data. So the residual plot should not have any obvious pattern. We don't want an obvious pattern. And the residual plot should not become wider or thinner as you go from left to right. So like for this one, you can see there's no obvious pattern. It's not following pattern. It's not becoming wider. So this one is actually really good because it just kind of stays the same spread the whole time. This one, you can see there's a little pattern there. It's kind of ducking and coming back up. So that's not very good. And this one, you can see it gets wider. So good. This one's bad. This one's bad. Because it gets wider 
and because there's a pattern. So if it doesn't get wider, and if it doesn't have a pattern, then we'll call it good. Okay, let's actually find these. So to get these, what we're going to do is we're going to um, figure out what the y hat is for each value, and then we have to subtract y minus y hat for all these. So to get y hat, I'm going to go ahead and put these in as list one, list two. I'm going to do one more set of data entry on this one, and we're going to run that lin reg a plus bx. That way we can figure out what the y hat equation is. Okay, let's do that. So we're going to do stats, edits. I'm going to clear these out. Clear these out. First one, um, I got my numbers to put in there, so let's type those in. So zero. 15, 20, or no, 12, 20, 8, 16, 14, 22, 4, 6, 2. Okay, got those all answered. Next one, 74, 81, 84, 90, 84, 83, 84, 85, 79, 77, and 80. Okay, should be the same length. Hopefully got all the values typed in there right. Now we can do that lin regression, a plus bx. And hopefully have list one. Oh, make sure this is list one. Mine got switched when I was doing stuff, so that's why I thought it was good to double check. Calculate. I get a is 76, so it's 76.7 plus b is 0 0.48, so 0.48x. Okay, so I need to evaluate this to find all the different values for all these numbers at the top. So one way to do this, this is probably the easiest way to do this, is I'm going to actually create this equation here. So I'm going to do 76.7 plus 0.48x, and I'm going to do the zoom 9. So I can graph it. So this is the graph of those values with the bright line of this bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the trace key. And I'm going to go up until I hit it on the line. So you can see I'm on the line. And then to get my y hat, I'm just going to type in the x value. So I'm going to type in 0. And it's going to tell me what the y hat should be. And so that's kind of an easy way to do that instead of having to sit there and like type each one of these x's in this equation every time. So you can actually use the line as your equation on the graph. So for 0, I should get 76.7, which makes sense, right? Because that would be this. If you put 0 here, you get 76.7. I type in 15, I get 83.9. So I type in 12, I get 82. I'm just going to do 82.5. I don't want to try and fit four decimal spots in there, or four spots. So I'm going to type 20, I get 86. 3. Type in 8, and I get 80.5. Type in 16, we get 84.4. Type in 14, I get 83.4. 22 gives me 87.34. I get it 78.6. 6 gives me. 79.6 and 2. 77.7. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to enter these into my list 3. So I'm going to hit stat, go to edit. I'm going to go to list 3. I'm going to type that next set of my next list. So I've got 76.7, 83.9, 82, 45, 80.5, So by doing that, what this lets me do is now to get the differences where I subtract, what I can actually do is I can go to the next column and I can do list two, which is my y, so I'm going to hit second list two, minus list three, which is my y hat, so second list three. So by doing list two minus list three, I get the difference. And that will give me all those answers without me having to sit there and subtract all those values. So it just kind of does the subtraction way faster. 
So this is a little tricks that save you time, which I love the little things that save me a lot of time. So hopefully that helps you too. So we're going to go 2.7, so 2.9, we'll get 1 1.5, 2.7, 3.5, 1.4, 3.6, 2.3, 0.4. 2.6, 2.3. Okay, now that we got that in there, now to graph this, we're going to graph list 1 and list 4. So graph list 1, list 4, on the scatter plot graph. So I'm going to go to y equals, um, sorry, second y equals, sorry. I'm going to graph scat, the scatter plot, but I'm going to, instead of doing list one, list two, I'm going to do list one and list four. So list four. There it is. So this is my list three. This is my list four. Just to clarify, so I'm doing that bottom list. So by graphing that, my graph, and again, I'm going to have to zoom nine. Oh, I might as well get rid of that y equals two. I don't need that anymore because that's what I have to fit for other data. So then I'm going to zoom nine. And this is your scatter plot for the residual plot. So our residual plot, and it's got a value down here, 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 about here, do, 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 do. And you can see it's pretty good, right? You know, the width here does not get much wider. There's not a good pattern, so we'd say it's good. It's kind of same width, it's not getting wider or skinnier, um, and that tells us that the correlation or regression results, this this regression equation, all that stuff, is useful. It's good for doing hypothesis tests. It's something we're we're bound to do. This would be the test for that. And so it's kind of a long these kind of test. So unless you really want to make sure, need to make sure that your data is useful, you wouldn't really need this. But that'd be the only reason. And then the last page here is just one friendly reminder. So that's all the math. The last thing is just a little friendly reminder. The linear regressions we're doing are only for straight lines. So that's all the stuff we've been doing so far is assuming that they are scattered about a straight line. If the points scatter about a curve instead, um, then it doesn't work. Regression equation, um, you know, it is possible to calculate regression equation no matter what shape it makes. Um, so it's always important to graph the data points to scatter plot first. You can see it as a curve trend, right? Curve trend, not straight line. So this straight line doesn't really mean anything with this data. Even though they went and calculated this, you know, y hat line using the linear regression and all that, it's useless because this is definitely a curve. So when you're working with this, it's always important to graph your data first. And so if people are asking you to work with, you know, scatter plot data and regressions and all that, you should always go and graph the data and make sure it makes a nice straight line. Don't just assume it does. That's it for chapter 10. We got one more chapter left, just three more sections for the end of the semester. So I'll see you on the next set.